Welcome back, everybody, to Breakthrough, a Dale Carnegie podcast. I'm Faith Wright, your co-host, along with Neville DeLucia, and we're excited to be back today. We have a special guest, Larry Long. Larry is one of my good friends. He's founder and CEO of LRJ's Enterprises, which focuses on sales motivation, inspiration, and most importantly, transformation through speaking, coaching, and training programs. He is the host of the weekly midweek, midday, motivational minute, (laughs) and author of Jolt. Wow. As a former college athlete, he played baseball for the University of Maryland. Larry is extremely passionate about coaching and helping sales professionals and leaders take their game to the next level. As an experienced sales leader with a demonstrated history of success, Larry brings a unique perspective to the table and understands many challenges faced by sales professionals today. His area of expertise includes sales training, team development, leadership, and motivations within organizations of all stages. Practicing what he preaches, Larry continues to seek opportunities to learn and grow. And so we look forward to having Larry on the podcast today. Larry, thanks for coming on. And can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? We had that brief bio there. But go ahead and share some more of your story. Thanks for coming on. Wow. I am happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Faith. Thank you so much, Neville. You you said it all. I don't know who I need to write the check out to. <laughs> that introduction has me blushing. <laughs> but I'm on a mission to help people elevate and organizations elevate to take their game to the next level. Larry, your energy is so enthusiastic. We love to see your energy that you bring to the table. Every time I've seen you, it's like this um, immediate joy as you walk into the room. And I think that that just fills spaces. And whenever you help leaders and train people, um, I can't imagine the results and impact that that makes on the people that you serve. Um, Can you take us back to when this passion started to develop, you know, in your young adult age, maybe what kind of sparked that, that passion for, for growth and development? It's contagious. So I know we want to keep our droplets to ourselves, but we want to spread positivity and just share our blessings with others. I got that probably when I was around 10 Both of my parents worked for Department of Veterans Affairs, so I grew up around veterans, Mm. serving veterans, providing for for those that have really risked it all for us to have freedom. Wow. And that's just continued from age 10, just having that servant mindset, servant action, because so many people want to do good, but essentially it's kind of like what my mom said. Your actions speak so loud, I can't hear what you're saying. Wow, that's powerful. So powerful. I love that. I love how you state that. Um, you know, and, and like um, Faith was alluding to, you, you come in and you've got this passion and you just light the room up. If you think about the people that you're engaging with, so whether it's um, you know, the, the salespeople that you're training or the organizations or the individuals that you're coaching, what could you share to help these people show up better in the moment, right? Whether they're teaching, whether they're parenting their own kids, or whether they're young adults just starting out in the world, whether it's going to college or going to work. What advice would you give them to say, hey, how, how can you show up better? What can we do in, with your experience, do you think? I, I love that question, Neville. It really comes down to intentionality. Mm. Sometimes, and, and I just worked through this with my coach yesterday, Folks have the perspective of it is what it is. And my Steve Harvey family feud voice survey says, nah, (laughs) it is exactly how we make it. We have choices in life. We have control in life of our emotions, our actions and attitude, and how we treat other people. So I advise people, number one, let's look in the mirror. What's going on with that person, that number one? Are they taking care of their mind, body, soul, and spirit? 
because it's tough to pour into someone else's cup if your cup is empty. Mm. So what are you doing to fill your cup so that you can then give your 100% to others? How can you serve? What are you doing to be a resource, to assist other people? Are you intentional or are you kind of mm. just flying through the wind, letting the turbulence, the chaos, the storm, and we have a storm coming through, letting the storm direct where you're going, or are you taking control? Mm, Larry, that is so good. Man, that personal responsibility that you urge people to have. I and mean, I think that's especially true for high school and college students starting out. They have leaned on their parents. And as they transition and make this huge life change, um, making sure that they're taking personal responsibility for their lives, filling their cup, um, focusing on being poured into so that they can pour out, right, and be that light. Um, and take control no matter the storms, because the storms are going to come, like you said. So Mar Larry, you mentioned in there that you get coaching yourself, you know, as a coach, you find that that's important to get coaching as well. Can you tell us a little bit about your, your mindset behind that and how that has proven to work in your life? Yeah. Well, for those folks that have played sports, team sports, individual sports, and I know your background, Faith, playing mm -hmm. tennis. <laughs> We've had coaches to get us to the top of our abilities. Well, why should that stop when we become professionals, mm -hmm. when we continue through life? And I always like to ask people, if you're a coach, who's coaching the coach? Yeah. So for me, it's one of the wisest and best investments that I've made in myself to make sure that I'm being held accountable. I'm receiving new perspectives and different outlooks on different life circumstances, business circumstances, mm -hmm. you name it. So my coach, what's going on, Coach Kristen Fred? It's <laughs> absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. It, it's been vital to my growth and my progression of really breaking through mindset. I mean, if I was left to my own fruition, I would tell myself all the things that I can't do when really there are so many things that I can do. You know, my daughter goes to college now and she was saying that um, you know, the days of spoon feeding dad are clearly gone, you know, that's, uh, and that's about this independence, you know, and I know that we'll go through university or, or, you know, or college and, 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 and when they come to work and, and they start their careers there's this I can do anything I want to do anything but if you think about when you started out and when you you know you got this fire in you what would you say was the breakthrough for you that got you going on this path that you're on if you had to isolate it to one critical thing what, what was that thing Larry yeah it dates back to age 12 wow. I told my parents I want to start on varsity in high school in baseball as a freshman. Mm -hmm. They said, well, what's your plan? I said, I don't know. I don't have a plan. They said, well, we're going to invest in a solo hitter. And it's going to be your responsibility to get your swings in, do your homework, practice 30 minutes on your clarinet. I was squeaking away. <laughs> and then I had to take 100 swings on my solo hitter. They said, that's pretty much the recipe for you to start on varsity as a freshman. They said, we're not going to force you to do it, but we're providing you the tools and resources. It's now up to you to take control. And it was at that moment that every day I would take a hundred swings. Now I'm going to ask you Neville and Faith, do you think I started on varsity as a freshman? No. No. I think you did. I think you did. You're, you're a wise dude. You did. Of course I did. <laughs> Shoot. When I stepped in that batter's box, I looked at that pitcher and I said, I've already got you B. There's no way that you worked on your balance point a hundred times every night. I was making sacrifices. My friends were at the ice skating rink. Yeah. They were at the mall having a good time. And for me, I was putting in that hard work. I took control of my own destiny I trusted the process, and lo and behold, it worked out. 
Now it wasn't guaranteed to work out. Of course. I tell you, there's no replacement for hard work. Yeah, and that work ethic, right? That work ethic comes in. You know, one of the things that I often, you know, in, in the youth programs that I run, you know, and, and, and some of the parents and people that I speak to, they say things like, Yo, you know, the youth of today, you know, in my day, they had this big comparison, right? But I'd, I'd be curious to know, you know, you said that your parents said, have you got a plan? Gave you a resource, your parents, and gave you the freedom to make the decision and hold you accountable, I'm assuming, in some aspect. So I'm wondering if maybe parenting has changed. Not so much, not so much the young adults or the teenagers of today or, or, or these folk. Is it maybe parenting has changed? So you know, my, my parents, you know, disciplined us, held us accountable. And, and sometimes I wonder, I've done things as a teenager that my parents still don't know about. But there was this accountability. And I kind of wonder maybe are we as parents holding our young adults accountable maybe you know if they do something wrong take the phone away you know take the car keys away if we need to i'd just be curious to hear your thoughts because you've given such wonderful credit to your parents um I mean, what, what would your take on that be i think there's always been a spectrum of mm. parenting and i can tell you my wife and i my wife is on one end of the spectrum <laughs> and i can tell you i'm on the other end she says, you're so mean, you're so strict. And, and that just comes from our upbringings. My, my, my father was a disciplinarian. My mom was a little bit softer, but I credit my father for that discipline, the work ethic, the internal drive that you can't teach. And my mom, with my soft skills, my, my empathy, my, my care, and my dad as well, but, but I can tell you that there's been a shift kind of in society. Uh, everyone's a winner. No, everyone's not a winner. There's winners and there's losers. It is what it is. There's been times that I've lost that have taught me the best lessons. And, and I don't protect my kids from losing. My wife says, why don't you let our son win every now and again? No, he's got to earn. <laughs> He's going to have to put in the hard work because I can tell you that in the game of life, there aren't many participation trophies. Mm -hmm. Everyone isn't a winner. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's kind of cold, but it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, you hit that right on the head. And one of our, one of our employees, you know, Doug Stewart, he says that coworkers, he says that resilience is a byproduct of action. And what you're talking about right now is that whenever we take action, whenever we put our ourselves on the line, take that risk in being willing to fail, that's when resilience is built, right? Over time, uh, we can overcome challenges because we've built up that resilience to keep going, to keep working at it, to strive, you know, to be that winner in a sense, because as you're so right that not everyone is a winner. We don't get that participation, participation trophy in life. So for you specifically, how have you overcome challenges? Like what's been the biggest challenge that you've faced um, in your career and what has helped you to overcome it? Ooh. Now, when you look at my journey line, there are some highs, some lows, some ups, downs, twists, and turns. Some of the lows. Mm, I didn't play pro baseball. I went to minor league spring training with the Dodgers and the Red Sox. Wow. And they said, hit the road, Jack. Thank you for coming out. God bless you and good night. Don't let the door hit you when the good Lord split you. Now I learned that, hey, I gave it my all. I can look in the mirror and say, hey, I gave it 110%. I used to own an indoor baseball and softball academy. That didn't work out. I learned my lesson that you better know your numbers to be successful in business. And those numbers aren't batting averages, home runs, and stolen bases. Those numbers are the income statement, balance sheet, and statement of cash flows. So throughout the lows, I've learned so many lessons that have propelled me to highs. And I think there's a saying that when one door closes, a window of opportunity opens up. Now, so many times we're focused on that closed door that we miss out on the opportunity. 
So what I've learned is that when the going gets tough, I got to continue going. I got to continue rowing. I got to have that perseverance and persistence because around that corner, and there's a book that my coach shared with me, it's called Three Feet from Gold. Ooh, so many times we give up when we're right around the corner from mm -hmm. success. Gotta just keep digging. You're three feet from the goal. Let's go get it. Now, it's that opportunity, you know, that opportunity that, that you know, opportunities are never lost. Somebody else, you know, somebody else just takes them. And um, uh, the way that you put that together, I think is spot on. What do you say to those people that are maybe hesitating to take that opportunity or to take that risk, whether the risk is a minor one, whether it's speaking up in a, in a boardroom environment or whether it's asking that, that, that girl or boy or the person that you have an affection for that you'd like to spend more time with them or maybe see if there's a, a connection or what would you say to someone, the opportunity, what, would you, what advice would you give or what would you share to say, take that opportunity, take that shot? It's easy to say, kind of like Nike, just do it. But really what I found, oftentimes it's the story we're telling ourselves. And for me, that voice is Cletus. Come on, Cletus. I got to knock Cletus off my shoulder. And oftentimes, and, and maybe this is just me, I build things up to be scarier than they really are. Yeah. And, and when I'm able to break through, and by breakthrough, I mean documenting, writing down, what am I fearful of? What are the pros and what are the cons of taking action, moving forward? And when I look at that and I say it out loud, it's like, wow, Larry, that's not even true. That narrative that you built up, it's not even that bad. And it's when you build that muscle that, hey, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to either succeed or I'm going to learn. And hopefully I succeed and I learn, hey, I can conquer anything and everything in front of me and, and realizing that I don't have to do it alone. Mm. I can ask for help. I can mm. go ahead and get the A team. I, if people that are listening, if you don't have a personal board of director, if you don't have coaches, mentors, many mentors to assist you, I, I strongly encourage you to find that team right now. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, let's mount up and roll together. Amen. Amen. Sure. Yes, community gets you places. And, and just like you said, whenever you do it alone, it's going to be a hard, strenuous process. Putting more than one brain together is really what makes a difference. So many times, fear and self-doubt hold us back from taking action. It's the preventing measure. And just like you said, realizing your self-talk, I mean, that's the biggest barrier is ourselves and the limitations we put on us and getting people around us to call that out in us, to elevate us, to remind us of the truth of our potential, right? To jolt us, if I may. So, yes, right <laughs> yes. So what, what's one piece of advice that you would give to entrepreneurs maybe uh, that want, want to be in the space that you're in right now, Larry? Yeah, well, I would say you are enough. No, it's going to take hard work, but you are enough to get started, mm -hmm. to get that first step. Right now, I know that there's people that are noodling. They're noodling on being a public speaker, a coach, an author. We just did a program for National Speakers Association of Carolinas on all things book. I think it's something like over 90% of people have noodled about writing a book. Less than 1% actually follow through and complete and publish a book. That tells me there's a lot of noodling going on. <laughs> Stop noodling and let's get started. Yeah. If we think about the belief action gap, right? A lot of people know that they want to do it. They have a desire to do it. And then actually doing it, they somehow get stuck along that gap. What is the number one thing that you would say you've seen uh, in people in that gap? And then what is the greatest impact 
you feel like you've made in someone's life? Can you share a story about how you've gotten someone out of that gap? Yeah, so it really comes down to mindset, self-talk, self-narrative, self-limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs. And it's breaking through. As we're talking about those breakthroughs, it's those folks that are able to see a different perspective, Hmm. a, a different way that maybe, hey, we can explore that there is a different way. It doesn't have to be the way that you've crafted it up in your mind, especially when it's a negative. So the best story would be me because it's near and dear. So I made a transition from corporate America Mm -hmm. to hanging my own shingle. And my coach said, Larry, you haven't updated your LinkedIn profile. What's up with that? I said, well, coach, I got to have a website. I got to have a one pager. I got to have a speaker reel. And she said, do you? I said, yeah, of course. I don't want to be out there and be unprepared. She said, well, Larry, let's play with this. Let's explore if you were to update your LinkedIn profile, what happens if you don't have a website, a one pager, a speaker reel? Does that stop you from still getting booked? No. Well, what's holding you back? Well, coach, I really want to make sure that I'm ready. She said, and she didn't say this verbatim, but I'm a mind reader. She pretty much said in her Steve Harvey family feud voice, survey says, nah. (laughs) She asked me, will you commit to updating your LinkedIn profile before the next time that we chat? I said, no, I'm not going to commit to something that I'm not committed to. So she took me through another exercise. What are the pros? What are the cons? And at that point, I said, I would be stupid and dumb to not update my LinkedIn profile. 700 plus reactions later, six inbound leads and two closed business deals showed me that the narrative in my mind was false. It was Mm. fake news. And it was that mindset and the ability to see kind of a shift in mindset, a shift in perspective that there is a different way for me to get there. If I had waited on my website, speaker reel, one pager, it'd be 2025. <laughs> Still be waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Still be waiting. Uh, our, our, our testimonies give so much power because whenever we're able to speak on our own experiences, uh, no one can take that away. Right. And so whenever we put that out and speak that out, there's so much power in our words. And I know that people listening, you've impacted them so much being on this podcast, Larry, um, if people want to follow you and continue to keep up with you and, and maybe read your book, right? Jolt, how would they do that? What's like a, what's your LinkedIn or a website name that we can put in the description of the podcast so that they can find you. Best way to find me is on LinkedIn, Larry Long Jr. I got the smile for a mile. I got a gold microphone in my hand. I like to drop the mic. And I also have a website. Larry Long Jr. That's jr.com. I would love to connect with everyone out there. And if I can ever assist or serve as a resource, please do not hesitate. And I mean that. A lot of times people say, oh, reach out. And, and, and I've been there before where it's kind of like that ego says, oh, I don't want to bother them. I don't want to put them out. Go ahead and reach out to me. It's not a bother. Mm-hmm. It would be my honor and privilege to serve you and to help you. Well, you heard it. Reach out to Larry. He, he has open arms and he wants to speak with you. Uh, if, if you haven't su- subscribed yet to this podcast, please subscribe. Breakthrough, a Dale Carnegie podcast. Hit the subscribe button for you notifications to be able to receive any updates. And when new podcasts come out, Larry, thank you so much again for having you on. Um, anything you'd like to say, Neville? Just want to say thanks. Love the passion. And it's, uh, it's infectious, man. Have a fantastic rest of your day and all the success to you. Thank you so much, Faith. Thank yes. you so much, Neville. And thank you to everyone for tuning in. Like Faith said, go ahead and bash that subscribe button. <laughs> awesome. We'll see you on the next podcast.